The followings are the major graduate student traps. When writing the literature review, some students would write like this. One author 1998 did a study and found this, too. Another author 1997 did another study and found that. Rather, we want to make a statement, then use studies to support the statement, and report details for only the very important studies. In conclusion, writing is the key to success in graduate school a skill that can be learned. Please note that we should read good writing carefully, not just for content, but for structure. In addition, rest before you proof and recruit a proofer. What should be in a good title? Several sections in the introduction serve to convey the significance of the problem and set forth the dimensions of the particular study. Title, Introduction, Problem Statement, Hypothesis, Definition, Assumptions and Limitations, Significance. The purpose of the tile is to convey the content, this should be done as succinctly as possible. A specific title helps the reader determine their interest level. Recently, there is a trend toward shortening titles. For example, Oppert and NIH grant require 10-word limitation for the title. However, do not go to the other extreme in striving for a short title professional preparation. However, please be aware that in the field of education or sociology, long titles occur. A title that is specific is more easily indexed and retrieved through electronic databases, and is more meaningful for a potential reader who is searching for literature on a certain topic. Potential title errors avoid waste words and phrases an investigation of or a study of. Also, be aware of your audience. For example, if you use the title Comparative Biomechanics of the Jerk in Olympic Weightlifting, some audience may not understand what jerk means in this case. You use the introduction to persuade readers of the significance of the problem, provide background information, bring out areas of needed research, and then skillfully and logically lead to the specific purpose of the study. How to write a good introduction? A good introduction requires literary skill because it should flow smoothly yet be reasonably brief. Do not be too technical. Audience awareness is important. They need background information to understand the nature of the problem, to be sufficiently interested, and to appreciate your rationale for studying the problem. You will need to provide a foundation for the study, convince the reader that the study is necessary, provide a theoretical framework for the study. Below are the parts of an introduction 1. General introduction 2. Relevant background information, 3. Gaps in the literature, and 4. Needed research. A good introduction will logically funnels to a clear purpose statement and leads to the method section. The problem statement follows the introduction. What are the characteristics of a well-stated purpose? One identifying the variables the statement should identify the different variables in the study, including the independent slash dependent variables, the categorical variable if any. Usually, some control variables can also be identified here. Here I would like to review the concepts of the variables. Independent variable is experimental slash treatment variable, it is the cause. Dependent variable refers to what is measured to assess the effects of the independent variable, it is the effect. Confounding variable is the moderate variable, a kind of independent variable except that is cannot be manipulated, such as age and race. Control variable is a factor that could possibly influence the results and that is kept out of the study. 
Prior experience extraneous variable is a factor that could affect the relationship between the independent variable and dependent variable, but that is not included or controlled variable. To clarity in the statement it is an important aspect in sentence structure. What are the characteristics of a well-stated purpose? A well-stated purpose should identify the variables, including independent and dependent variables. Categorical slash moderator variables. Control variable factor that could influence the results that is kept out of the study and extraneous variable factor that could affect the relationship between the independent and dependent. Variables that is not included or controlled. Structuring the problem statement is very important. After you stated the research problem, you must present the hypothesis or question for a qualitative study. Research hypotheses are deduced from theory or induced from empirical studies that is based upon logical reasoning and predicts the outcome of the study. They are the expected results, and are based on theory or previous research. Introduction produces a rationale for that research hypothesis. The strength to include hypotheses is to tell the readers what you expect for your study. You also need to know the concept of null hypothesis. Null hypothesis is used primarily in the statistical test for the reliability of the results that says that there are no differences among treatments or no relationship among variables. It is based on statistical tests and assumes no difference. Thus we usually want to reject the null hypothesis. Operational definition describes observable phenomena that enable the researcher to empirically test whether or not the predicted outcomes can be supported. It is as opposed to a synonym definition or dictionary definition. For example, a study dealing with dehydration must provide an operational definition such as loss of 5% of body weight. The term obesity in males could be defined as having 25% body fat. Every study also has limitations. Limitation is a possible shortcoming or influence that either cannot be controlled or is the result of the delimitations imposed by the investigator. Some limitations refer to the scope of the study, which is usually set by the researcher. These are often called delimitations. Delimitations resemble operational definitions. Although they are similar, they are not alike. For example the size of sample is a delimitation, but not included in operational definitions. You can also see that basic assumptions are entwined with delimitations as well as with operational definitions. The researcher must proceed on the assumption that the restrictions imposed on the study will not be so confining as to destroy the external validity of the results. Please be aware of this do not be overzealous in searching for limitations. Too many anticipated limitations may lead to rework, revise, redesign. The significance of the study should focus on such things as contradictory findings of previous research and gaps in knowledge in particular areas and how the study might contribute to the practice. Difficulties in measuring aspects of the phenomenon in question are sometimes emphasized. Generally, both theoretical and practical reasons are expressed, but the emphasis will vary according to the study.